guys, it's Jen from Hello Brio Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really fun confetti effect using the Scatterbrush and Illustrator. So creating a custom Scatterbrush and Illustrator is a really fun and easy way to add some dimension and interest to your artwork without having to draw all these objects individually. The first thing you need to do is decide on what you want your confetti piece to look like. You can do something as simple as a circle or a square, or you can do something more complicated like a star, a cart, or anything that you really want to be repeated throughout the artwork that you have. For this tutorial, I'm just going to be doing a circle confetti piece, but feel free to be more creative when you go to explore this tool. So in Illustrator to draw a circle, hit L for ellipse, and then hold down Shift when you're drawing so you can get a perfect circle. With this still selected, go ahead and open your brushes panel, which if you don't already have it open, go to Window and Brushes or F5, and then hit New Brush. From here, you're going to choose Scatter Brush, hit OK, and rename your Scatter Brush. I'm going to call this Circular Confetti, really original name. So I'm going to leave that all there and then hit OK and go ahead and delete your original object by hitting V, which is your selection tool, and just deleting that object. To select the scatter brush, go ahead and hit B for brush tool, and this will automatically be selected because it was the last one you created, and go ahead and draw a line through your artwork so that you can get started with your confetti. I'm actually going to create a layer between pancakes and background so that it appears below pancakes but above background. Hit new layer, go ahead and draw your brush, you can see by default the scatter brush will create all your objects in a row very close to the path that you drew. So in order to edit this and really see the magic start to happen, go ahead and double click on the circular confetti brush and then you can start to edit it here. Make sure your preview is selected and in order to get this to do really fun random stuff you want to change all of the size, spacing, scatter, and rotation to random. Because this is a circle, I don't need to change the rotation to random because a rotated circle will just still look like a circle. So if you have anything other than a circle, go ahead and, ch and choose random, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. The size is pretty self-explanatory. If you adjust the size from 50% to 100%, you'll see that your object is now either 50 or 45% of the original size all the way up to 100% of the size. Um, same with spacing, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit of a random spacing, but scatter is really where the magic happens. You can change this from like negative 500-ish up to positive 500, and you can really see that the objects are pulling away from the original path to get that nice random effect. The important thing to do here is change the colorization method to hue shift, so you'll be able to choose your stroke color for your brush to be anything you want and then just go ahead and click OK. Just click Apply to Strokes and Prompted. And if you like this general look of the brush but you're not a fan of how the dots are placed, you can just click the, the brush over and over again until you get an arrangement, a random arrangement that you like. So if I go ahead and click, you can see it's changing, it's kind of scattering them all around the place. And I like this, so I'm going to go ahead and, and stay with that. Now, if I wanted to add another layer of confetti, all I need to do is use my brush tool, again, that's the shortcut is B, and just draw another line through my artwork. Now, it's another yellow bit of confetti here, but if I change the stroke color to be something else, let's try that color, you can see that it's uh, changing the color of the, sh of the scatter brush that we created. So I'm going to rearrange it a little bit, and you know what, I don't actually like that color, so I'm going to choose something within my palettes, my swatches, and choose this green. It disappears because it's the same color as the background, but if I go into the color picker and choose something a bit darker, it's still related to the color of the background, but it's just a nicer green that works well. If you don't like your stroke, you can just delete it, draw another stroke through, and really start to play around with how these are layered together. Now, if you're, if you're drawing your strokes and you don't like how things are hanging out by the edge of the page, all you have to do is make sure that that line is selected, that brush stroke is selected with the selection tool, when because I just drew it, it is already selected, but if I had to click off, hover over it until it's highlighted, go ahead and select the brush stroke, and then just go to Object, and then Expand Appearance. This will allow all the individual pieces of your confetti to be outlined as is, and then you need to ungroup them before you move them or else you can see they're still all grouped together. To ungroup this brush scatter, go ahead and hit Shift-Command-G 
And then you can see you can choose one individually. And if you really want to go in there and tweak things to get them exactly where you want them, go ahead and move them around now. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out my blog at hellobrio.com for more tutorials.